Welcome back. U.S. China trade in focus this week. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin and Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer in Shanghai today with the latest round of negotiations. Expectations are said to be low after talks between the two sides broke down back in May. Joining us right now is former White House trade official and Akin Gump partner, Cleet Willems. Cleet, it's good to have you on the program back uh, with Thanks. us. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Do you think we're going to get a deal with China? I think we'll eventually get a deal, but I think it's going to take a while. And, you know, expectations are low for this week, and that makes sense. You know, the two sides haven't talked for a while. And what they really need to do is feel each other out and figure out what is the baseline moving forward. What worries me, though, about a deal is if China isn't going to go back to where we were in May, the U.S. has a packed agenda. We've got USMCA, we've got Japan, we've got the EU, we've got the WTO reform. And if China isn't going to go back to where we need them to be, I think you're going to see U.S. attention diverted elsewhere. But I'm going to come back to this and say we still get a deal because I think the politics for it are right. There's a lot of chatter out there, people saying, oh, the president doesn't really need a deal because he can show that he's tough going to the election. And I don't buy that. If he can show that he's the deal maker in chief, if he can get a deal that really moves the ball on the structure, Structural issues, that's the place where the U.S. wants to be. Yeah, but that's the question. Will it move on the structural issues, Steve? I mean, the, the, the Chinese walked away uh, from things like putting into law, you're not allowed to cheat and, and steal IP from the West. They no. reneged on that. <clears throat> well, that gets to uh, the, the whole thing. Does China want a deal? Does, uh, do they really want one? Doesn't look like it. They may think they can wait uh, President Trump out. What do you I, think, I I hear that coming from China, but I, I don't think it, it reflects reality. Let's talk about this for a second. If you look at China, you're seeing stories every day of companies starting to move their supply chains out of there. And that's something that China doesn't want to see happen. You have the CICC, a major China investment bank, just a couple days ago release a report saying that this trade dispute has cost China over 2 million jobs in the industrial sector. And so you even had China la uh, a couple weeks ago go now reporting the lowest GDP number they've reported in 25 years and I know that some of those books are cooked but the fact that they were going out there and saying it's as low as it's been in 25 years tells you something so I do think that they are in a position where they do need a deal and uh, I do think that once we get back to the table that they're gonna hopefully show some flexibility so that that, that we can get to yes because ultimately I think this will benefit both sides and that's why I'm gonna stay optimistic even if uh, that's not the conventional wisdom is, at the moment. Is, is, is China pursuing an alternative strategy as well of trying to do a free trade deal without the United States in the area, tying those countries even more to uh, Beijing and cutting us out? No, of course. That, that is absolutely part of their strategy. There's a whole series of negotiations they're involved with. Um, the one that mo most people are familiar with is called RCEP, where they're basically trying to lower tariffs with about 15 or 16 countries in the region. So you are going to see them pursuing that uh, to try to show they don't need a deal with the U.S. But like I said, I do think this is hurting them, and ultimately they will have to come back to the table and make some, make some moves. Uh, you talked about, good morning, you talked about the uh, slowdown right. in GDP growth in China. Some people think that, in fact, it's much worse than that. Uh, and you do read almost every day about countries, companies going bankrupt in China. What's your read of the actual economic situation there? Well, I think that they're holding on right now, but the reason they're holding on is because they're pumping a lot of bad credit right. into the market. And I don't, th that can't last forever. Most of the real serious economists that I talk to say that, you know, this is a little bit of a, I don't know if sugar high is the right way to describe it, but this is certainly a temporary fix for them. So I don't think they're quite yet in desperate straits, but at some point they're going to run out of those bullets. They're going to run out of the ability to pump credit into their market and they're going to have a real problem. Well, and they're going to need a deal before that happens. What's your take on USMCA, Clee? Trade Representative Lighthizer and House Democrats have already met four times, apparently, to talk about the proposed agreement with Canada and Mexico, most recently this past Friday. Both sides are saying that they are making progress, but some House Democrats are aiming for a vote before the end of the year. It's up to Nancy Pelosi. How do you see it? Well, this, there has never been an agreement more deserving of bipartisan support. You know, the, the Ambassador Lighthizer and the Trump administration did a great job here of, of drafting an agreement that's going to create a lot of jobs in the U.S., in particular in the U.S. auto sector, but also that hits the key Democratic priorities for years, 
things like labor, things like environment, things like currency. Now, I've heard good, good vibes coming out of the, the talks between Lighthizer and Pelosi, where they're trying to you know, enhance some of these elements of the deal. And I think that ultimately they're going to get there in the fall. Okay. A lot of people say politically they're never going to give the president a win. But look, we just had a deal last week on the budget. So th these sides can work together when it's in their mutual interest. Right, and I think so you, it is so you think it comes to the floor in the fall? We'll, we'll be right. If it doesn't come to the floor in the fall, uh, th this is going to have big problems because if you can't make a trade deal with your friends, I mean, what about the other trade deals we're talking about? No, Chris right. Bedford, jump in here because we want to talk 2020 and trade. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren rolls out her trade policy plan. Before endorsing any deal, the Democratic hopeful says she'd require negotiators to invite labor and environmental groups to trade advisory committees and require the U.S. International Trade Commission to analyze how the deal would affect the entire country. Cleet, let's get uh, Chris's uh, thoughts on this, and then please uh, yours as well. Well, it's just sure. a classic far-left trade plan, which is the people I want at this ta table are international bodies, environmentalists, and union activists. That Those are not typically the folks that should be at the front, though often those things ought to be considered. And when, when the president right now is really focused on America first and focused on jobs and manufacturing in this country, and instead the focus over here is on environmentalism and on the Green New Deal and on extensions of that, that's a, that's a stunning contrast and one that she's, she falls into the example of someone who would not want to see President Trump's trade deal pass because she'd rather have her own. I feel like they have to do that because if they talk about the economy, it's all happy talk. And, and but how do the environmentalists <laughs> and labor guys get along anymore? They're at each other's throats. Envi the environmentalists are trying to shut down uh, work, public works projects all over the country. That coalition is becoming more and more difficult to hold together every day. And that could be a prime issue for uh, Donald Trump in 2020. Why does it take 10 years to do a high Highway where you could do it in two years. What are all the obstacles? Well, we know what it is. All of these regulatory reviews that are absolutely unnecessary. Yeah, that's why he came out with that big, you know, pomp and circumstance when he cut all the regulations. Remember that? With the yeah. piles and piles of regulations. Clean, real, real quick on that. 2020 and Elizabeth Warren's plans here. Right. So, I mean, the fact that labor and environment are in there, I mean, that's traditional Democratic policy. So I'm not surprised by that. What was troubling to me was just the way that it was brought in and this notion that, oh, if you're not a party to the Paris Agreement, I we see. can't do a trade talk with you. Yeah. That means we're not, you know, it's going to be really hard for us to do deals. And further, I think it's really was just an attack on corporations. Yeah. You know, corporations are businesses that, that apply millions of Americans. And I don't think that's the way to go. Cleet, we should be so opening much. up markets. Cleet Willis, thank it's you. great to see you this morning. Thank you.